Hey everybody, I'm Sean Powers, and I thought that today I would do something a little bit different. See, I'm still doing all the hardware setup at my micro data center at my farm, so I don't have that video quite ready because I don't have all of the hardware quite installed yet. So hopefully this week that'll be done and I have a big long video of me doing lots of dumb stuff with tools I'm not qualified to use, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so that should be good. But I thought that uh, this week or for today, I would cover Linux certifications because most of the questions I get with regards to Linux and my channel in general have to do with Linux certifications. And there are a bunch out there. Some of them are better than others, at least in my opinion. And uh, the pricing can vary uh, quite a bit, but also not as much as you'd think. So I want to go over some of the Linux certs. Again, all the stuff I'm going to talk about is my personal opinion and a lot of it from my personal experience. I'm looking forward to hearing other people's experience in the comments, uh, but I want to cover some of the basics. So uh, first of all, let's start with uh, the Linux Professional Institute. Now, LPI has a bunch of exams and certifications that you can get. Uh, they are the only company that provides an entry level certification. So the Linux Essentials course, which is, I just hit my microphone, but it's uh should pop up right up here, like a playlist for that. I did a complete uh, playlist slash course for preparing for the Linux Essentials uh, certification if that's something you want to do. But again, they're the only ones that have that that entry level uh, stuff going on. And that test, if you want to take the exam, is $120 here in the U.S. All the pricing I'm going to talk about is U.S. pricing. It's different in other countries. Sometimes the pricing isn't even comparable based on exchange rates. Sometimes it's just different prices in different countries. But anyway, uh, so the Linux Essentials course is $120 for the exam. Uh, but again, that's just the, the essentials to see if you even like Linux. That is not going to uh, make you a successful system administrator at all. If you want to get the first like real uh, exam or real certification from LPI, it's going to be the LPIC-1. Now, LPIC-1, to get the certification, requires that you pass two exams, and each exam is $200. So it's $400 total to get the certification. So uh, this one, it's it's pretty much the, uh, has been the industry standard, uh, I don't like to say entry level because that's really Linux essentials. It's a pretty robust course, LPIC 1 is. And for that $400 taking both exams, you could do a job as a system administrator. You might need to Google, but honestly, we Google anyway. I mean, that's part of being a sysadmin. You Google stuff and you just understand the results when you Google, when you know things you know, like in the LPIC one. So that's the their uh, first real exam uh, level. Next, they have LPIC two, which again is two exams, each one costing $200. So $400 to get the LPIC two certification. You also have to be LPIC one certified in order to uh, add on the LPIC two certification. And this one is pretty in depth. I'll be honest, LPIC two is pretty advanced stuff. In fact, uh, it's the sort of stuff that when I'm actually doing these tasks as a system administrator, I have to Google them because I just, it's not the stuff that you do often enough to remember. You know, when you're when you're doing like uh, PAM configurations, plug pluggable authentication modules or uh, SE Linux stuff, you don't do that often enough to have it, you know, ready to go. So that means two things. One, it's a more advanced exam and more advanced certification, but also even if you are a system administrator with decades of experience, if you take the LPIC2 exams, you're going to have to study because it's going to have to be fresh in your mind. So it's important to know that just because you may be able to do the things that LPIC2 will prepare you to do, you need to study if you want to pass the exams because you just won't remember. And then LPIC3 is their, I guess, most advanced, but really it's their most specialized. And there are five, five different exams each one costing $200, so $1,000 on top of LPIC 1 and LPIC 2. And I'll be honest, I have never taken LPIC 3 exams. I believe, at least back when I was looking at like doing a training for it, uh, it's a lot of hands-on stuff, and it, it was difficult to make a video training course for that. So I don't know a ton about LPIC 3 other than you really need to have a good reason to take it. Like if you have a job now and you will get a raise, if you get LPIC 3 certified, 
and somebody else will pay for all that, you know, training and hands-on stuff and exams. Great. As far as just having your resume, I don't know that that's an investment in time, effort, and money that's going to pay off. So again, it's very advanced, very specialized, and also very expensive. So uh, another uh, non-district, oh, that's something I didn't, I don't think I mentioned about LPI. They're non distribution specific. So they teach you concepts regardless of like a Red Hat or a Debian Ubuntu uh, system. It sh you should learn stuff that works everywhere. It's it's not distro specific. They try really hard to be uh, distro agnostic, in fact. And the same thing with the Linux Foundation uh, certifications. Now, I want the Linux Foundation certifications to be incredible because I love the Linux Foundation. That said, uh, the LFCS or the Linux Foundation Certified Sysadmin, uh, the exam is, I, I took this exam, I, I made training for this before. It's kind of like LPIC 1, uh, but maybe not quite as advanced as LPIC 1, but it, it's on, on par with LPIC 1 when it comes to complexity and the stuff you learn. But here's the thing. Uh, oh, it's $375 to take the exam, but it's only one exam. So, you know, the one exam is cheaper than the two exams required to get LPIC 1. But, but, and it's a big but, the exam process was a nightmare. I could not even finish the exam when I took it because it was buggy. It crashed. I had to log back in. I had to reconnect with the proctor who was watching me via webcam multiple times. Uh, the the path names for the things that you configure are so incredibly complex and things like tab complete to like get to, you know, the, the path didn't work. So I had to really type these ridiculous path names in all the commands. It was, it was just not cool. I did not care for the, the exam process itself. That's been a couple of years. So hopefully it's better now, uh, but just know that the exam process was frustrating. And while it may be $25 cheaper than getting LPIC one, um, it, the, it, it wasn't worth it for me. Uh, and also they used to have a second exam, uh, that was, uh, the Linux foundation, uh, certified engineer. And that is actually not available right now. They're apparently revamping and they're going to have a more advanced certification that replaces the certified engineer. Um, I don't know the price of that exam because it hasn't been announced or created yet, but hopefully they improve the testing process. In fact, if you took the LFC S, this is admin test. Uh, let me know in the comments what your experience was. Like I said, mine was a complete nightmare. It was it was rough. And then uh, the last uh, distribution agnostic uh, exam is going to be CompTIA's Linux Plus. Now this used to be a twofer. You used to be able to get LPIC one and Linux Plus at the same time because CompTIA worked with the Linux Professional Institute. And if you took the two LPIC one exams, you got LPIC one certified and you also got Linux plus certified. However, CompTIA separated from the LPI and now they have their own exam. Okay. So Linux plus is now its own thing, not connected with LPI or LPIC one at all anymore. Uh, now their exam, their, their pricing is, is more complicated. Um, in fact, if I remember the graphics big, so it's, uh, probably taking up more room there, but, uh, for the, just the exam, it's $349 or $348. So it, it's, it's a good price compared to the other distro agnostic, uh, certifications that you can get but that doesn't give you a retake. If you want the option to retake it, if you don't pass, it's a 449 for the exam with the option to retake. And I think they give you, uh, they give you like testing or like a, a ebook of training or something along with that 449 option. And then of course they, they do offer uh, like real training from them. If you don't just want to watch some guy on YouTube to learn how, although some guys on YouTube know what they're talking about. I mean, not me, but you know, some people <laughs> anyway, uh, it, Honestly, Linux Plus, when they split off, I was part of their beta testing program for their, their test. I love the exam. The process, the the um, combination of rote memorization, but also hands-on, like virtualized uh, learning and, and command entering. I thought it was a great process. I really enjoyed the test. It was rock solid. It worked well. Um, I passed because I could finish and I really do like the Linux plus certification. Also CompTIA is very well known, even in places 
uh, that aren't Linux centric, like if you're applying for a company that isn't all Linux all the time, they're going to recognize the CompTIA name, even if they might not recognize LPI, LPIC1, Linux Foundation, that sort of a thing. Okay, so those are the main uh, the main tests, the main exams, and the main certs that you can get uh, for Linux for becoming you know a certified Linux person. Uh, there are a couple though that are distribution specific. Now, one is the I'm going to read this. So if I'm not looking at the camera, it's because I can't remember the whole long thing. Uh, the name of the the certification is the Oracle Certified Professional Oracle Linux Eight System Administrator certification. So if you want to get that Oracle cert, uh, it is $245 for the test. Uh, and based on the objectives, this is something I've never taken, and I'll talk about why in a second, but uh, based on the objectives that they list, it appears to be about LPIC2 level of complexity. So, I mean, it's, it's a pretty robust test. However, it's specifically geared towards Oracle Linux 8. And that's a very niche world inside a very niche world of Linux. So if you don't specifically have a reason to get Oracle certified for Linux, it's a tough, uh, it's a tough exam, a tough certification to recommend. Again, if you are going somewhere that an Oracle certification is vital or will help you or will get you a raise or you're worried because they use Oracle Linux and you've never even used it, uh, then yeah, maybe it's worthwhile, but you have to have a very specific reason to get a specific Oracle Linux uh, certification. Uh, and then lastly is Red Hat. Now, Red Hat is industry standard, right? I mean, it's very, very, very widely used in corporate environments. And so their distro specific certifications uh, do make you more hireable if a company is using Red Hat. So uh, there are two main certifications. There's the Red Hat Certified System Administrator. It's a $400 test. Uh, it is all based on the objectives. Just to be clear, okay, I should back up. So Red Hat is very, very protective of their IP, of their intellectual property. So in the past, I have created a course uh, when I worked for a training company to prepare you for the the Red Hat exam. However, I couldn't use the word Red Hat I, and I had to use CentOS as the the operating system that I used for training. Now CentOS has changed. That's a whole nother video now. CentOS isn't what it was before, but it used to be like a direct byte for byte copy of Red Hat Linux uh, Enterprise, RHEL. Uh, so anyway, um, so I have done the training and if I had to give it a, a level of complexity, it's going to be about comparable to LPIC 1 when it comes to how uh, thorough the training is. But again, just like with Oracle Linux being very specific to the Oracle Linux world, when you train for a Red Hat certification, it's very Red Hat Linux specific. You're not going to learn how to do, you know, apt install because Red Hat doesn't use that. So it's very Red Hat specific, but about an LPIC one level of difficulty. If I had to, if I had to grade it now, they also have uh, the next level of certification for Red Hat. It is the Red Hat certified engineer. Uh, this one is $400. I don't know if I mentioned that the, the RHCSA is a $400 exam. The next level, the certified engineer is another $400 exam. You have to have the, the first one to get the second one. Uh, so it's another $400 exam. And this one is almost entirely Ansible. Uh, it, it's a little bit strange. In fact, it's, it, it's an engineer thing, but it's, all about automation, or at least from the objectives, that's what it looks like. I have never taken the exam for the um, RHCE. If you have, please leave some comments below, but it appears to be almost all uh, automation and specifically using Ansible because Ansible is Red Hat's baby, right? That's their that's their product. And so um, while it's really great, uh, it's, it's a lot of um, automation and very specific to Red Hat. Again, if you're getting a Red Hat certification, you got to know it's going to be all Red Hat uh, specific. As far as complexity go, again, it's hard to compare. It used to be, I, I seem to remember that their their second tier used to be like on par with LPIC2. But again, now the objectives just talk about automation and it's a very complex automation. But um, Red Hat also wants you to do their training. And you may honestly do well 
to listen to them <laughs> and use their training stuff because not only do they have training materials that they've developed for their own exams, but they also have intermediate uh, exams that you can take on uh, various system administration levels that won't necessarily get you a cert, but passing the exams will give you the confidence that you're going to be able to pass the next exams. Like they have specific Ansible training that will prepare you for uh, the Red Hat Certified Engineer uh, certification course or exam, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So if you want to be very specific about Red Hat, you may actually want to look at their training materials because they obviously know what they're going to ask in the exams. Okay. So that's it. If you're looking for just general Linux certifications, I don't recommend going with the specific distribution. You want something distro agnostic, like something from LPI or something from CompTIA or maybe Linux Foundation, but I don't really recommend that right now. Maybe their next exam is going to be awesome. And again, please tell me if you've taken their exam recently and it wasn't horrible. I would really like to know that because my experience has obviously jaded me as a trainer and as a learner. Uh, so I, I'd love to know about that. Uh, so anyway, that's the, those are the main certs for Linux. So those are the main things. I would love to know what you would like me to possibly uh, make training for, to prepare for, should I do LPIC one? Should I do Linux plus? Uh, should I, I don't really want to do Linux foundation. Would it be better if I did something specific for, uh, you know, Oracle or Red Hat? I, I think it's a little bit easier with Red Hat uh, as a not corporate training entity, I can say the word red hat and I don't think I'm going to get a cease and desist, but I don't know. Maybe I will. Maybe you will never see this, <laughs> but anyway, let me know what you would like me to train. And also I'd love to know your experience on Linux certifications because it's been a while since I've taken those certs, uh, you know, over the years I've, I've trained and I've taken certs and exams and, and trained for other stuff. So, um, I don't always have the most recent information about the exams themselves. So please leave comments, not just for me, but for everybody who is interested in this sort of a thing. And of course, like always, learn everything, do what you love, and most importantly, be kind. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.